today we look at the newly redesigned Chevy Tahoe. For about $80,000, you're getting the brand new redesign of one of Chevy's most iconic vehicles. Is it worth the price? Let's find out. But first, shout out to Coon Chevy, Buick, and GMZ of Clarksville for getting us this Tahoe today. If you're in the DMV area and in need of one of those vehicles, check out their website in the description below. Let's get into it. We're going to start this with technology. This is a very nice system they have in play. It's on a 10 inch screen. Overall, this is a very snappy system with some very useful features. If you go to the settings, you have a teen driver and a valet mode. Very useful settings on a vehicle of this price point. You can use the physical gauges down here to navigate this using this knob to go up and down as well as to select. You also have your home button down here to bring you back to this. This does have Apple CarPlay Android audio, which you'll be hearing through these nice 10 speaker Bose audio systems. Overall, this is very nice technology and it definitely is deserving of the price point. Now we're moving on to the camera systems this thing has. This does have the guidelines, which you can turn off over here if you decide you do not want them. However, I don't see why you would do that. They are a very useful feature for a vehicle this large. You have your rear view camera, which shows you out the back view, which is very useful if you have anything behind you, like we have that big wall there. You have a bird's eye view of the rear, which can also be very useful to avoid backing into anything. On your sides, you can check to see your wheels to make sure you don't curb the vehicle. And you also have this for your tow hook if you have any sort of trailer attached. And you do have your overall bird's eye view, which will show up next to the vehicle. Now let's talk about the center gauge cluster. You do have these two big physical gauges with the four digital ones over the top, as well as your center display screen, which is controllable from here on the wheel. Using the arrows, you can navigate over to your information, your radio, navigation, um, your phone settings, and your overall settings. This is also where you control the heads up display, which we'll talk about next. Moving on to the front of the Tahoe, you have this nice black bow tie, which is gonna cost you about $250. You also have the custom high country badging on the grill. Moving to the inside of the grill, you have active aero shutters, which can help with your um, mile per gallon at higher or lower speeds. Also for airflow, you have these air curtains down here, which are real on the Tahoe, but are fake on the Supra. So kudos to you, Chevy, for that. Lastly, you have your nice LED headlights, but there are not any fog lights present on the front of the Tahoe. Now let's talk about the heads up display. It might be a bit hard to see, but this is a rather large heads up display. You can change the information presented on it from the wheel. So if you don't wanna see, say the speed limit sign, you don't have to. Right now it is showing us the tilt, the incline, your drivetrain, as well as the current speed. And there is the little sign that will display the, city, the speed limit of the area, but since we are in a parking lot, there is not one here. Moving on to the side of the Tahoe, you can see just how long this vehicle is. It's about 210 inches long, which is about a whole seven inches longer than the previous models. You have these really big 22 inch wheels, which just complement the overall size of this vehicle. For an additional $275, you can get the black high country and Tahoe badging, which really tie in well with the black bow tie on the front. Of course, one of the most noticeable things is a, this $500 cherry red paint job. This is such a stunning color and really makes this vehicle pop. You also have the premium package on this vehicle, which gives you the auto deploy and running boards with the lights below them. 
Moving on to the back of the Tahoe, you do have the nice black Tahoe badge and accented by this chrome bar going across the back. It's a very clean look. Moving on to your taillights, you do have the LED taillights with the incandescent turn signals. And a cool little tidbit about this vehicle is the Chevrolet badge and inside the taillight. It's engraved on the little um, chrome bit that goes across. It's a very cool little hidden feature. You can open this glass part separately by finding the button on this rig and pressing it in order to open the glass top. If you want to open the whole thing, you press the button down here. It is auto rising, but it does not have the little foot kick feature that some vehicles have nowadays. In the back, with these seats up, you have about 25 cubic feet of storage space. If you were to put them down, that would give you about 72 cubic feet of storage space. And if you put every row down, you have about 125 cubic feet of storage space. These seats are automatically lowering and rising. By holding these buttons, it will lower the seats from back here. And you can hold them if you want to raise the seats from back here. Very cool to have. But with the second row, they are auto lowering from back here. You can get them to lower by holding the button, but you cannot raise them from back here. Let's talk about driver's assistance features. This vehicle does have auto emergency braking. However, this one, as part of the $4,600 premium pack package, gets enhanced auto emergency braking. Also, as part of that package, you are getting radar cruise control. You also have blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert and lane keep assist, along with the IntelliBeam uh, automatic high beam system, which is a pretty good suite of safety features. However, uh, I wouldn't want to be paying extra for radar cruise control, especially at the price point this high country starts at if you're liking the video consider subscribing it helps us out a lot let's get back to the video Let's get into your Tahoe here. As you can see, we have the new Chevy key. It looks pretty nice. These buttons are a little plasticky. I'd like if they had a little rubber coating or something, but that's pretty minor. All right, to get in the vehicle, you're just gonna hit this button and it will unlock. Just locked right there. And you'll see our running board will deploy. Really nice ease of entry with that running board. And you are really high off the ground. That's what's so great about these SUVs. Starting the vehicle up, of course, keyless system. You just push the button and the vehicle roars to life. As you can see, everything is nice and in sight. Everything is nice and reachable. Uh, your sight lines out the vehicle are really good, except that rear quarter. The seats can block that, but that's kind of just a factor when you get to a vehicle of this size, especially these three row SUVs. Uh, having your heads up display gives you great vision out the road. You're so high up. General first interior entrance is really a great experience. And now we're gonna jump on into the interior of the vehicle. First impressions are very good. The looks are amazing. This is one of the best designed vehicles I think I have seen in quite a long time. It's very visually distinctive and interesting to look at. However, when you start to feel around, you'll start to feel that there are some holes in those looks. For example, this wood along the dash isn't really wood. It feels like a vinyl sticker. That's something like the $30,000 Nissan Rogue we were recently in had. No, that's not what I expect from an $80,000 high country. Some of the soft touch material here, while it is soft touch, it feels very thin, not, not really that great. However, that is not to say that this is a bad interior. There's still lots of nice stitching. And once again, the visuals in this interior really are top notch. I think some of the best in the industry. Uh, all of the buttons, very easy to reach. We'll take a look at visibility too, of course. Uh, let's get a little deeper into it. And now let's take a look at some of the more functional elements of this interior. First of all, the gear shifter is very quirky. Automakers feel the need to be weird and quirky with their gear shifters. On this video, Vehicle, you have all of these buttons that you're supposed to pull and push. Um, one thing that we noted when we were just moving the vehicle around is it has a very aggressive shake when you put the vehicle in gear. I'm not sure if it comes across on camera, but putting the vehicle in drive, the whole vehicle shakes occasionally. It's not doing it too bad right now, but it's just something to note. Um, 
Moving from there, you do have, again, air vents, nice centrally positioned. And let's take a look at your climate controls. You do have physical climate controls. They're nice rubberized buttons, so nice and easy to grab and reach. And of course, in Chevy fashion, it'll display your temperature on the screen inside this little dial. Now, one thing we noticed is that the, um, the climate control system is crunchy. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what, what do I mean by that? Well, it's a very advanced system, lots of different zones and whatnot. Um, so there's lots of different vents moving around inside the car to make that all work. So when you turn on the air conditioning system, you can hear a lot of stuff moving in the dashboard. I'm not sure if it will come across on camera. We'll boost the audio a little. So keep in mind, it won't be this loud, um, but it is noticeable. I'm gonna turn it on now. And if you hear, especially towards the passenger side of the dash, just uh, listen up right here. So that's just a little interesting bit we noticed. You can definitely hear all of the advanced parts of that climate system moving around the dashboard. Uh, I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Just a cool little quirk we want to point out to you all. You do have a phone charger down here. Um, it is kind of hard because it is such a big area, but you kind of have to position your phone just towards the bottom centrally to get it to charge. Uh, and then you have USB-A ports, USB-C ports, lots of charging options, which is fantastic. And then cup holders with the little nubby bits to hold your drink in. I absolutely love that. And then you have another phone holder right here. I'm really glad that Chevy's putting in all these phone holders. Really good thinking on their part. Now, to open your center console, there's just a button right here. And you have a really large center console as we're used to seeing in these large SUVs. I mean, you could fit a big purse in there or something like that. And of course you have USB-A and C ports along with a little tray uh, just to keep things nice and tidy. One thing that could be nice, I like when the systems have sort of like two levels so that you have one shallow opening just to throw in maybe pens or coins, but that's just a really tiny improvement they could make in the future. Overall, this area is extremely functional and really nice. Another really functional part of this center space, how about the mirror? Now, let's say you have tons of stuff in the back of the vehicle. Chevy has this really nice video mirror. You flip that and now you see the seats have disappeared. That's because you're seeing a live video feed out the back of the vehicle. This, of course, is, can be extremely useful. Really innovative thinking on Chevy's part. Here's another interior quirk of the Tahoe for you. They have this interesting little tidbit right here. Opening that will reveal a very deep yet narrow hole. It kind of makes for the perfect hand warmer. Um, other than that, uh, we've tested it. A phone doesn't really fit in there too well. You could toss keys in there, but they'd get lost because it's very deep. So uh, let us know what you guys would put in there. And now you join me in the back of the Tahoe. And once again, the visual design back here is absolutely stellar. Really, really nice. But again, the materials can leave a little bit to be desired. Lots of hard stuff down here. And again, this leather could use a little more padding behind it. Other than that though, um, there are some nice materials like the metal door handles feel really, really nice. Looking at your center console, you have lots of nice amenities back here. Of course, your own rear climate zone. You do have heated outboard seats. Approaching 80 grand, cooled ventilated rear seats would be nice to see you have two USB C ports and you also have a power outlet interesting fact about that they have illuminated the inside of the power outlet many automakers illuminate the outside but they have actually gone and illuminated the inside uh, metal contact parts of it which is a neat little feature this seat itself is pretty comfortable. Your kids will be happy here. Two things to note though, the rear passenger in the third row can hit buttons to mess with this passenger, either by folding down the headrest or there is a, another button back there which folds this seat all the way down and forward. So it's not gonna hurt anyone, but it is just something to keep note of if you have rambunctious kids. Getting back into the third row is actually very easy. You have a little lever, you just pull it twice, once to fold the seat down, now the time folds all the way forward and now getting in, Anyone can do it. And back here, legroom is very adequate, I would say. My knees aren't touching. Um, I think you could definitely fit two adults back here. Not three, but you could fit three kids back here, which is really, really nice. Also, that uh, sunroof right there is absolutely massive. It's part of the $4,600 premium package we mentioned earlier. Um, so. Definitely a nice area for your passengers. You do have some USB-C ports back here and cup holders and air vents, so they'll be happy. Here's a fun fact for you. The Chevy Tahoe actually comes equipped with massage seats. Well, 
Not quite. Um, it's a bit of a hidden feature, you could say. All you have to do is put the car into reverse and have a friend walk back and forth uh, behind the car for you and your seat will vibrate, giving you a massage. Um, it's not the best massage, but hey, it's technically a massage seat, I guess you could say. This is actually Chevy's really cool safety system that vibrates the seat if it detects that you're approaching a person or an obstacle that you're about to hit. It really gets your attention a lot better than a beep. Very cool uh, safety feature, not such a great massage feature. Feature. Under the hood, you have a 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 V8, putting out around 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. You can expect around 14 miles to the gallon in the city and around 19 on the highway. That's routed through a 10-speed automatic transmission to all four wheels. Moving on to the trims now, at this dealership, they only have high countries, so we're just gonna move around to different high countries to get a different color selection. But the first trim available is the LS. For $49,000, you get a chrome roof rack and 18 inch wheels. For just under 54,000, you get the LT, which gives you wireless charging, a premium nine speaker Bose audio system, and a hands three power lift gate. Once again, they don't have anything other than the high country, but if this was an RST, you'd get a jet black interior with red stitching, black 22 inch wheels, and a black grill. For 62,600, you get the Premier, which gives you magnetic ride control, lane change assist, and front and rear parking assists. And finally, for just under $70,000, you get the High Country. It gives you a unique High Country interior, the 22-inch wheels, and the 6.2-liter Ecotec V8 engine. This is a really fantastic vehicle. It has a lot of features that make everyday life a lot easier. You have that nice little glass hatch in the back. You have the auto-deploying running boards, the full suite of safety features, and a really snazzy interior to complement it all. But is it ADK good? That's a question you're gonna have to answer. This is no longer competing with Ford or it's not competing with Toyota. This is competing with Land Rover. It's competing with BMW, Mercedes. At ADK, uh, you're really in some serious territory and those competitors also have a lot to offer. So it's really gonna come down to if you think that this specific feature set might match what you want. It is just something to keep in mind. If this was 10 grand cheaper, 20 grand cheaper, it would absolutely be a buy. Now again, that's just, it's a high price, but it really is a fantastic vehicle. It's just competing against lots of other fantastic vehicles at this price point. A huge thanks to Coon Chevy Buick GMC of Clarksville for letting us take a look at this 21, 2021 Tahoe. And a big thanks to you all for watching. If you like our videos, consider subscribing for more weekly car reviews. We'll see you in next week's video. And now let's get into the third row of the vehicle. Getting in is very easy. All you're gonna do is pull this lever right here to fold the seat down. And then there's a little strap you pull on the back. And doing that, we'll release it. <laughs>